fracking facilities such as this are popping up across West Virginia. I'm Jamie Robinson and coming up on WVU News, I'll show you how residents are reacting. I'm Charles Clark and straight ahead on WVU News, I'll tell you how coal-based power plants are opposing a new rule from the Environmental Protection Agency. Do you know what's in your drinking water? I'm Natalie Price and straight ahead on WVU News, I'll tell you about Morgantown's water supply. Our award-winning WVU News starts now. The Environmental Protection Agency is being challenged in the Supreme Court. The reason? A new rule designed to make the environment healthier. Find out how this can affect your safety. I'm Nicole Ford. And I'm John Ferentz. With over 3,000 fracking wells in West Virginia, many residents are concerned how it's affecting their health. These stories and more on our special edition show, WVU News Goes Green. The EPA is being challenged in the Supreme Court on whether they should regulate mercury and other air pollutants from power plants. Reporter Charles Clark is here to tell us how this affects West Virginia. Charles? Thanks, John and Nicole. 21 states and many different organizations are petitioning the Supreme Court. Justices are divided on whether the EPA should consider costs when limiting emissions. However, the EPA says the benefits are much greater. With over 40 coal-based power plants in West Virginia, I found out how these changes could affect you. The Environmental Protection Agency is being challenged in the Supreme Court on a new rule regulating the amount of mercury being produced by coal-based power plants. According to Assistant Professor Adam Berta, West Virginia is especially at risk for mercury exposure. West Virginia as a whole tends to have a lot of a lot more coal mines, um, and I would say percentages are probably a little bit higher than most surrounding states who aren't as uh, coal dependent. Mercury exposure often comes from fish, which contain high amounts of the toxic metal. Ohio native Anthony Pappas says when he fishes in West Virginia, he is cautious about his catch. Depends where I'm fishing at. If it's heavy waterways, such as like the Mon or the Ohio River, something like that, I wouldn't eat them. Those opposed argue that these new rules violate a clause in the Clean Air Act, which cites that regulations must be appropriate and necessary. They claim the e EPA ignored factors when passing the regulations. One of the reasons power plant companies are opposed to the rule is because of the cost. It's estimated that power plants across the country will have to spend $9.6 billion in order to comply with the new standards. I mean, there's got to be a delicate balance. You can't just put the companies out of business, but they also have a responsibility to any waterways that they're polluting to try to clean it up as good as they can, filter it as well as they can. If upheld, the regulations must be met by all coal-based power plants by June 26. Justices on the Supreme Court are split on the issue, and many say they don't know how the justices are going to vote. The decision for the case is due by the end of June. John and Nicole, back to you. Thanks, Charles. In other environmental news, with mercury in our water, many West Virginia residents are hesitant when it comes to drinking from the tap. That's right, John. Reporter Natalie Price had a chance to find out if our water here in Morgantown is safe to drink. <laughs> West Virginia is no stranger to environmental disaster. Last year, 300,000 West Virginians were unable to use tap water for several days after the Freedom Industries chemical spill. Since the accident, many water treatment facilities across the state have had the job of restoring confidence in the water supply. Some people trust it. I've lived here all my life, 26 years. I've always drank it. And others don't. Do you feel like the water's clean here? No. Governor Tomlin passed Senate Bill 373 last March, which is meant to keep our water supply safe. In Morgantown, the utility board hired downstream strategies to help them with the task. That requires us to do a number of things. We're writing a management plan, which is a plan for how to minimize the risk that contamination occurs in the future. We're also writing a contingency plan so that MUB knows exactly what actions to take. The Morgantown Utility Board puts out 10.5 million gallons of clean water every single day. That's enough water to fill up almost 16 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The most recently released report from the Utility Board says that organic contaminants were found to be at non-detectable levels. Coliform bacteria, which can indicate the presence of other kinds of harmful bacteria, was not found. And Morgantown's water supply is currently considered safe. Natalie Price, WVU News, Morgantown. 
Even though Morgantown's drinking water may be considered safe, many West Virginia residents still believe it's contaminated and fracking could be to blame. During fracking, toxic chemicals leak and contaminate nearby groundwater. Reporter Jamie Robinson found out exactly what fracking does to our environment. Jamie? Contaminated water, poor air quality, radioactive waste. Experts say these are all things associated with fracking. But many people don't know exactly what fracking is or how much damage it can do to the environment. I had a chance to take a closer look. This is the sound residents across northern West Virginia hear on a daily basis due to the fracking facilities in their area. Hydraulic fracturing or fracking is a process that injects a water, chemical and sand mixture into the ground to recover natural gas. Resident of Doddridge County, Mariana Burham, says the rise of fracking has changed how she lives her life. What has happened as far as I'm concerned, I moved to a rural area for a reason. And instead, I find myself living in an industrial area that I had no control over. Fracking is responsible for over 60% of all oil and gas wells drilled in the United States. West Virginia alone has over 3,000 fracking wells in the state. Co-chair of the Marcellus Campaign of the West Virginia Sierra Club, Jim Sconyers, says that fracking has many negative effects that are not always shown. The air pollution consequences, the leaking methane, everything to do with uh, a gas well, uh, you know, the, the fracking site and so on, it's human made and eventually it'll fail. Also at risk if these facilities should fail is the Monongahela River, which if contaminated would affect the drinking water of over 350,000 people. A 2012 investigation by the Department of Justice assigned fines for violating the Clean Water Act. These fines could range from $2,000 to $25,000 a day. Fines that may pave the way to reduce the biggest risk involved in fracking. People getting hurt. People getting hurt. I mean, and, and getting sick as a result of the pollution, the air pollution and the air quality aspects people getting sick. From 2009 to 2013 alone, West Virginia saw 364 violations reported and four spills caused by fracking. Only 30 to 50 percent of fracking fluid is recovered. The rest of the fluid is left to evaporate. Experts say this process releases harmful chemicals into the atmosphere, contaminating our air. John, back to you. Thanks, Jamie. Fracking is not the only thing polluting the air. Everyday products you use in your home can lead to many environmental problems. The average American has about 46 aerosol products in their home. These products can include cleaning supplies, hairspray, shaving cream, and air fresheners. Aerosol spray sprays release many pollutants. Using aerosol sprays can be easier, but experts say they can lead to health issues to those who use them. These products can cause respiratory complications and allergies over time. The pollutants released from cleaning supplies only once a week can increase your risk of asthma by 30%. From spraying aerosol cans to the gases your car releases, causing air pollution is easier than most people think. And Nicole, right here in the Mountain State, there's a high percentage of young children that have asthma, and that could be attributed to the high rate of pollution. Reporter Devin Kelly got a chance to speak with drivers and healthcare officials on Morgantown's growing air pollution problems. The U.S. Department of Transportation reported that vehicle miles traveled has tripled since 1970. Due to the higher volume of traffic, more than half of the air pollution in the nation is caused mainly by automobiles. When you stop the car, the engine actually turns off, so you're not burning any gas in traffic. So like while I'm sitting downtown, everyone else's engine's still running and mine's off. When a car's engine is running, carbon monoxide and greenhouse gases are emitted into the air. These toxic compounds not only affect the environment and ozone layer, but human health as well. Ozone is one of those things that where, uh, you know, if you irritate the lung enough, uh, you can get permanent damage done in the lung. And when you go back home, um, you're not necessarily going to be free of exposure to ozone. Some air pollutants from cars contribute to global warming, but can also be deposited on soil and surface water, where they can enter the food chain. Idling in a car for more than 10 seconds wastes not only money, but uses more fuel and emits more greenhouse gases than just restarting your car. Global climate change and global warming and all, these are, this is due to air pollution. And if you don't make that link back to the air pollution and say, what is the air pollution doing? It's not just making the, the weather on the planet uh, more unpredictable or ch changed more. 
it's also causing health effects. Small globules created by fumes released from cars are worse on hot, sunny days. Studies show that all of these pollutants can cause asthma attacks, lung disease, and affect existing heart conditions. Devin Kelly, WVU News, Morgantown. With the leading cause of air pollution coming from cars, Morgantown is trying to help by launching a program where you can share a car. Skylar Harvath had a chance to find out how you can get a car online without breaking your bank. Straight ahead on WVU News, I'm Skylar Harvath, and I found a way WVU is trying to make parking lots obsolete. We're all different. Our interests, our backgrounds can influence our futures. But without focus, they're just dreams. But what if someone could give your interests life? If they could give your background power? If they could fuel what motivates you? That's what gives dreams meaning, purpose. And perhaps that was the moment you knew you wanted to be a mountaineer. Are you tired of constantly dealing with traffic and parking problems? WVU joined forces with Zipcar, an international car sharing company where sharing a car is actually helping the environment. Jennifer Clark joins us now from Social Square with the latest in social media and pop culture news. Jennifer? Thanks, John and Nicole. Sharing one zip car is actually compared to taking 15 personally owned cars off the road, cutting back on emissions that are released into the air. Reporter Skylar Harvath found out how you can easily rent a car online. It's a typical day in Morgantown, and with that comes driving and parking. But many people like Abby Lutz have to drive into Morgantown daily for work or class. I've tried to drive to the parking garage in when I'm like running really, really behind and that just really doesn't work out for me. I just end up being more late than I probably would have been if I would have walked. Luckily for Abby, WVU has a program to help cut down on troubles across town. Zipcar. Transportation and Parking Director Clement Solomon says Zipcar gives residents more freedom than any other service in Morgantown. When you want to use it, you choose how you want to use it without having to have a car on campus. WVU has six zip cars scattered over both campuses. All you've got to do, rent a car online and drop it back off where you got it. Last year, 383 students used zip car. Whether you need it for an hour or just a day, there are many different ways to use it, like doing errands or hanging out with friends. Officials say each shared car takes 15 personally owned cars off the road. In all, WVU zip cards take 90 cars off the road. That's a ton of emissions kept from the air. CO2 emissions can be reduced between 1,100 and 1,600 pounds per year. The average cost for renting a zip car is $8 an hour or $70 a day. Skylar Harvath, WVU News, Morgantown. A Zipcar's app is available for iPhone and Android. The app gives you the option of choosing a car and location. You can even lock and unlock the doors right from your smartphone. Nicole and John, back to you. More good news when it comes to the environment, and this could help you save big bucks on your electric bill. That's right, John. New research shows that solar panels installed can save you at least 50% on your electric bill each month. Solar energy will not only save you money, but it can also get the money back from the power company for excess energy produced. For example, the Mountain Line bus service originally paid $30,000 a year for electricity. After their solar panels were installed, they now only paid $10,000 a year. The typical panel is 3 feet by 5 feet and is usually mounted on the roof. The solar panels produce about a third to two-thirds of someone's electricity each month. Well, that's going to do it for WVU News Goes Green Special Edition. You can visit us online at our website. You can also watch any of our shows on YouTube. Please follow us and our reporters on Twitter. I'm Nicole Ford. And I'm John Ferentz. Thanks for watching WVU News. We'll see you next time.